I've got to conquer my fear of a tight waistband because I've made it massive and need too big. So women wearing trousers has long been a controversial issue and if you even think of the phrase, she wears the trousers, it has that kind of negative connotation to it of she's emasculating her man. To look at where our recent Western history of women wearing trousers begins, I think we should start with Amelia Bloomer, an American who came over in 1851 and she was a great advocate of rational dress and she felt that it would be practical for women to wear these kind of Turkish style harem pants under skirt kind of tunic and <laughs> she was scorned and ridiculed and she did give it up however uh, women did write to her in their thousands asking for a sewing pattern to make them with so some women thought that looks like a good idea but it didn't really catch on i guess the next pioneer of uh, women wearing trousers would be sarah bernhardt who often <laughs> bravely wore a masculine suit and she played Hamlet. She was quite courageous. This picture of Sarah Bernhardt in her trouser suit is 1870. Then come Victorians Edwardians, obviously <laughs> not really known for their trouser wearing. However, kind of certain kind of slightly balloony, breechy trousers were acceptable ish for sporting activities so cycling riding golf bathing was another one <laughs> it's a great cartoon of these two women and one of them is saying to the one in the she <laughs> cycling shorts she's saying but you don't have a bicycle and the, and the one in the cycling shorts is saying ah but I have a sewing machine so these cycling trousers you do see in Woodwardian times and then in 1910 the designer Paul Poiret who's fabulous I love them costumes for the Bally Rus uh, featured Turkish style harem pants again really tunics skirts worn over them and then the First World War breaks out in 1915 and women are sent to work in factories and it was pretty dangerous work. There are sort of pictures where women that look quite uh, pretty and I don't think it was really like that. Women kind of looked a bit rough as you would if you were welding, glass grinding, saw milling, working in hot engines. This is what they were actually doing and many of them were killed or maimed by being crushed by machinery burnt by acid, caught up in explosions. So there was this sort of strange conflict at the time between seeing women as these soft, gentle, can't really look after themselves, little things. But they were doing this, this highly dangerous work. So they really couldn't be expected to do this work in uh, trailing skirts that could get caught up in machinery. So they were issued with overalls and kind of basically they were now wearing trousers. And then from the war, trousers, it's not like they caught on but they didn't really go away either. <laughs> Largely due to female pioneers like Coco Chanel who always tended to wear <laughs> boyfriend suits and she introduced in the early 20s her lounging pyjamas and of course there are also if you go to the 1930s like fabulous beach pyjamas so it was trousers as a kind of loungewear not so much for proper day wear. Next uh, daring women <laughs> to look to would be the movie stars Catherine Hepburn and Marlene Dietrich and Catherine Hepburn actually stated that she preferred wearing trousers and I have a picture here of her in that wonderful film <laughs> Bringing Up Baby if you're wondering <laughs> you haven't seen it that leopard his baby with Carrie Grant <laughs> 
Cary Grant. I can't even say the name without a little flutter of my heart because I grew up... I basically grew up thinking men were going to be like Cary Grant in those films, you know, funny, bit naughty, but actually completely loyal and handsome and charming. Anyway, <laughs> better not dwell. And uh, not only Cary Grant did she get to play opposite, but James Stewart too. I seem to have gone off the subject of trousers. Anyway, yes. <laughs> and back to trousers. So, yeah, what was I? I'll move on to Marlene Dietrich. <laughs> so, she, of course, looks fabulous in trousers. Who wouldn't want to look like Marlene Dietrich? And she's wearing these white trousers. And there's this famous photograph of her arriving in Paris in 1933, where it was widely circulated that she had been arrested for wearing trousers. And that might sound bizarre, but actually there was a law. It's still still, I think it's been repealed recently. I'm not sure. <laughs> it was a law still around at the time and very much not enforced, but in the public consciousness that women were banned. It was illegal in 1800 for women to cross dress as a man. And in fact, it seems that the truth behind the story is that my lady Dietrich turns up after a long train journey She's really tired. She doesn't feel like talking to reporters and she walks past them and they're not happy. <laughs> not happy bunnies at all. So they write a story saying she's been arrested. And even though it kind of looks like she's got a man on either side and she's not looking very bothered, is she? You know, if it's <laughs> true she's been arrested, she's really not bothered. So these two women who glamorised trouser wearing, I, I guess it could be said. And other daring, rather glamorous women include Amelia Earhart, seen here, that famous female aviator, and the American female uh, commercial pilot, uh, Helen Ritchie, wearing trousers. She's on the right. So this is leading up to the Second World War, where women are back to the factories, not as dangerous as the First World War. However, <laughs> there's this uh, might look slightly extraordinary photograph taken where a woman appears to be burying her chest, but what she's actually showing us is her plastic bra which is there for safety purposes so it was still quite dangerous work and hard work women assembling uh, aircraft wings women welding even so uh, if we see the picture from 1940 that women on horseback they're riding side saddle in skirts so Although women are wearing trousers, work in factories, and of course, <laughs> the land army, who, like women in factories, really needed to wear trousers for practicality. They were driving tractors, they were working the land, and they needed strong, hard-wearing, practical clothing to do so. So this was how women wearing trousers became more normalised. However, it has to be said that after the war finished, uh, society, society, men, uh, were quite eager to have their old jobs back, for women to go back to being women. Wearing trousers was still seen as potentially a bit masculine. It was much more acceptable for the first time ever. But it still wasn't that mainstream. And it's quite interesting to look at trouser design in the 40s. It tells you a lot. So when women first started wearing trousers in the 40s, trousers were not designed for women. They were extremely unflattering. <laughs> They're sort of really made for men's figures. If not like that, creased down the front. So design was adapted. Having a centre zip like men's trousers do was seen as rather vulgar. <laughs> oh, their minds worked. Um, was seen as terribly vulgar, masculine and vulgar. And anyway, yeah. <laughs> and so women should not have a zip in the centre of their trousers like men do. It had to be fastened at the side and indeed 
women's skirts and dresses were fastened to the side. That's certainly the most distinctive feature of vintage trousers as opposed to modern trousers is that they'll have that buttoning up the left side and not have a central opening. It's a subject for another day but I do just want to mention the Rosie the Riveter overalls and the factories and the siren suits so both of those that were obviously <laughs> featured trousers. Overall the look was kept as feminine as wearing trousers would be in that era so the left fastenings the wider more skirt like legs and trousers that i'm going to make today definitely have all those features there billowy skirt like with a left fastening and i'm up in my loft in the midst of a heat wave this is where my cutting out table is and uh, even the dogs have deserted me and i'm here to cut out this pattern for you can call them lots harem trousers secret pants and it's a 1940s pattern and i changed my sewing plans because it's so hot i decided what i really needed right now was loose flowy uh, pair of trousers that would cover me up <laughs> because i burn and would be airy to wear and i decided to make the trousers in this lovely liberty tana lawn and there is a reason that liberty tana lawn has achieved an icon status it has a quality the cotton that I haven't found in any other cotton. It's because the fibres they use are particularly fine and long and it produces this very fine, crisp cotton. And the other thing that I love about Tana Lawn, which I've always sewn with, is that Liberty have always been a big supporter of talented, up-and-coming creatives. And the prints are... They have their wonderful ones from years gone by, you know, right back to the Art Nouveau period. And they also have prints from talented up-and-coming designers. And this is a new print. It's called Copenhagen for obvious reasons, because it features those small, narrow, colourful houses of Copenhagen. And I thought it's a really fun print and Tana Law will be lovely to wear in this boringly, <laughs> scorchingly hot weather. Weather. So I'm going to get on and cut it out. I will just show you um, how much fabric there is in each leg of the trousers. So this is just uh, one side of one leg basically and you can see a lot <laughs> to the extent i'm actually a bit worried that i've got enough fabric i always buy slightly less than they recommend thinking oh i always succeed in squeezing out a garment from as little fabric as possible always succeeded in the past but i am actually <laughs> slightly concerned so i'll get on and cut out the fabric and <laughs> we'll see <laughs> The pockets are interesting, they're like folded over triangles that hang on the outside of the trousers. I ran out of fabric for one of them so I had to piece my scraps together to make the second pocket. And what you do is you fold over the pocket lengthwise and then fold it again crosswise to create the shape of the pocket. And then you cut a slit in the front sides of the trousers. I marked where to cut to with the tailor's tacks. So the pockets are joined to the slits at the front, right side to right side, matching those raw edges to create the handkerchief shape, which I thought it might be uh, easier for you to see if I turn them the way that you're looking have to show you the sum total of the fabric that I had left. Um, yes, that was cut 
cutting it fine. Done exactly what I did with my shorts. It's down to my fear of having a tight waistband. Too many dinners have been got through feeling like, ow, you know, surreptitiously unbuttoning. Anyway, I'm trying them on. Uh, the other thing I've got to fix is uh, just this pocket and it's folding the wrong way because I've just caught with the stitching the MAC triangle over the front and I just need to adjust that so that it will hang like the others. I mean, yeah, interesting the pockets because the uh, design shows them out like this is the kind of little features. They're not really pockets, they're little flappy, maybe you sort of tuck them in a little bit like that, kind of <laughs> flappy decorative pockets. But the waistband, I'm actually, I've got to learn, I've got to conquer my fear of a tight waistband because I've made it massively too big, which means I'm actually going to have to unpick uh, some of my careful gathering and cut a bit off the waistband. I think I'm going to shape it a bit because it's a wide waistband and I think it could do with being a bit like narrower at the top and wider at the hips. So I'm going to kind of shape it, adjust that pocket and what I did too was I made sure that most of the gathers were around the back rather than across the whole time <laughs> for obvious reasons. Uh, so that's what I'm going to do now and then next time I make something, probably very very soon, I, I really am going to have to stop adding about 10 inches to my waist. And as you can see, these truly are secret pants. I love the pocket feature at the hips. I've kept the waistband pretty loose and as you can see, I can move around really easily, which is just as well when you have three dogs to run around after. This was an easy pattern but the instructions were actually more confusing than helpful so I just looked at the picture and did my own thing and here comes my friend to join me in the garden and I think she wants to play but instead she's going to get a kiss on the nose and another one. Oh, and I've got lipstick on her nose now and yet she can't stay away Anything is better than being ignored. And another kiss. I hope you've enjoyed seeing me make my trousers and I'll look forward to seeing you again next week. Come here. Won't we? Yes, <laughs> yes we will. See you next week. <laughs> Bye. Mm, what you seen? What you seen? Mm, easy to see, girl. Easy to see, girl. Oh, I tell. Oh, a seagull. Oh. <laughs>